In the upcoming 1.14 update for Minecraft, a bunch of new and exciting blocks have been added. As you can see, I'm cycling through them now, and a lot of them have very unique shapes. We've also got a bunch of crafting related blocks that, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't find much use for, but there are a load of new things that can be used for my typical building tricks and tips, and that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So, these are all of the new blocks that have been added to the game, and I'm very excited to show you what we've come up with. Now, these blocks don't actually have a function. I'm recording this in a snapshot server, so these may be subject to change, but we have the lectern, just to go over these very quickly, the bell, stone cutter, grindstone, smithing table, fletching table, cartography table, blast furnace, smoker, gr grass block? No, barrel. <laughs> scaffolding, and lantern. We have a pretty good idea of what each of these does, but that's not what we're interested in. What we're interested in is what we can do with them, and let's dive straight in with scaffolding. Now, scaffolding is used for Minecraft building, and well, to help you, but I thought maybe you could actually use it in construction within construction. So what we have here is a site where a building is being made. We've got some pillars made of stone, but the scaffolding sits on top of it and it looks very much like the steel framework that you might see on a construction site, which actually it works extraordinarily well even though it's a rather yellowy colour, just because of how much air is in between the block. And you can't have failed to notice the giant crane next to this build. It's absolutely fantastic, and it works with that kind of wire framework that you would expect to see on something like this, and on top of that, it's even functional, as you can climb up the middle of this to get up into it. Now, the scaffolding does have a slight drawback that you can only go six blocks before it falls down. However, if you utilize some cleverly placed oak slabs and trapdoors and stuff, you can extend that out far enough so that you can make a decent looking crane. So, that's a really good use of using scaffolding, not just for your Minecraft building, but the buildings that you make in Minecraft that are being built. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? The next one is actually a really simple idea, but it works extraordinarily well. So imagine that this is a Minecraft street that I've made. And if I go and stand on this piece of scaffolding and I shift down, I end up in the water. Now, if I press control, I can also swim. And it only has to be one block wide because of the 1.13 update. And I've made some sewers. So what this scaffolding does is actually give me access to the sewers very easily as I can just press control, then shift and swim downwards. Although it is a little bit janky sometimes in order to get there. But imagine you can make an entire sewer system using the scaffolding as an entrance. And it even looks like a drain because it's got these holes in it. And this only works because you can actually waterlog these blocks with water itself. Moving on, a more simple design that you might have expected from this video is just scaffolding, which by itself looks like a picnic table. Very easy to do, but add a barrel on the top and then a tripwire hook, you've got yourself a keg that's standing up on its own, and you could place this vertically or horizontally, up to you, it works in both scenarios. Moving on, we have got a lot of these to show you. This is an idea for an elevator. Now, because of the 1.13 water elevators that were added with the bubbles, this might not be the best way of transporting anything, but if you go inside, you can turn around. If you're going to do the thing properly, you close the doors. You press spacebar to go up or shift to go down, and you can travel between the floors of your base very easily. And of course, the doors are there to kind of hide the fact that this looks nothing like an elevator in the inside. <laughs> However, if you did want to, you could remove this bit here, as you can just go down. It depends how many floors that you have. If you wanted to separate your floors even better, you could actually use some trapdoors like so, and open them as you go up and down through the layers. However, that is a bit more work, <laughs> if just to go up and down when you could just use a water elevator. Moving swiftly on. This is a desert style build, but we're not going to be looking at the house that was just constructed very quickly. We're looking at the pergola that is used to diffuse light. Now, obviously, there's no real sunlight that's going to burn you in Minecraft, but you can use these to make this kind of decoration. Now, I've done this sort of design before with signs, but it also works very, very well with scaffolding. 
Moving on again, we've got a room divider using bamboo and some scaffolding behind it. And it works again because you can see through it and you can even walk through it as well. Moving on, now ignore the building behind the fans. What I want to show you is the idea of using this for a windmill. Now this was constructed very quickly behind this, but the main thing is to look at the design of this. Typically, windmills have this wooden framework of squares and the scaffolding just works absolutely perfectly. Now you need to use some trapdoors to stop this falling. Otherwise that happens, which is not ideal. And you can see that with just the fences behind it, it doesn't look as good. The scaffolding actually makes this work really well. And additionally, you can see this circle in the middle. Now this is one of my favorite parts of this design is the fact that you can use this grindstone on this circle and it just makes it look more reinforced and made of something more industrial. It actually works really well when this whole thing is put together. Moving swiftly on, now the textures of these blocks have changed. The cartography table did not used to look like this and there's a very high chance that most of these blocks' textures may change in the future but I'm just hoping that these designs will work. So anyway, if we go inside this room, you can see that I did use this cartography table as a decoration for some walls. It works this side, but it doesn't work this side because of the texture change. But that's okay because there's a few other things to show you. The use of barrels as tabletops, or the use of a smoker as an oven, because it actually looks more like an oven than a furnace does. You can use blast furnaces mixed in with some furnaces to make yourself a rather nice looking kitchen floor. Okay, let's move on, shall we? Now this is a very simple idea. It's just the use of the barrel, which has pretty unique textures on the top and the bottom. It looks like a trap door. Obviously it's not really a trap door and you can't actually use it, but it does look like it leads to a cellar just because of this little handle here, which I think works quite well. Moving on, more to do with the barrel. Because it has such a unique texture, not just on the top of it, which is this one, but actually the bottom of it is very much like the spruce plank, but it's kind of got this square outline. So if you mix it into your walls, you can create a rather nice looking texture that gives it that extra little bit of detail. And the same with the sides, you could integrate it into your wooden walls to make it look a bit more reinforced. Moving on, we've got more to do with the whole texture change, but the smithing table actually has a really nice top texture, but the bottom texture makes for a very fancy red looking ceiling. Okay, moving on again, this is one of my favorite designs. This is a kitchen using mostly new blocks. So we've got the barrels, which actually make really good kitchen units, where, especially when they're stacked up like this, because they look like you can open them, even though you can't. This is an extractor fan, nothing new there, but this whole setting works rather well together. The blast furnace makes a decent looking floor, but the key part of this design is the bell, which is a very strange block, but it actually looks a lot like lighting. The only thing that I want to say about the bell is that is a bit strange. So if I take these blocks, these are our main light sources as full blocks. Now, the bell won't sit on top of the glowstone or the sea lantern, but it will with the jack-o-lantern and it will hang from the jack-o-lantern, but not the glowstone and not the sea lantern, which is really weird. But it means that you can use the jack-o-lantern as a source of light and then hang it and it looks really, really cool but not the ones that we use all the time. Regardless, that could change in the future. Let's move on to the next one. Now, this is obviously a pile of logs. Now, we used to use this technique of putting rails over the top to make it look like it was tied down. However, if you don't like that, you could just use barrels in the logs there to make it look a bit more close to the bark and that it's got some wire frames over the top. It's not quite as good looking as the rails, if you ask me, but I think that it works nonetheless. Moving on, I've got a pretty decent pillar design to show you. Now, this is utilizing the barrel texture again and some trapdoors around it. So you go trapdoor, barrel, trapdoor, then your main pillar and the overall effect is rather nice. Now, with the addition of the lantern, which is a new light source that we've all been asking for and it's a little bit better looking than the old fashioned torch, you might have expected lots of designs, but the lantern, much like the bell, kind of doesn't sit on everything like you might expect. 
However, we've got a bunch of different lampposts to show you in various different ways, including just on a post. And you've got some old-fashioned Victorian style lighting, if only we had some sort of glass that we could put around it. That also looks really cool. Hanging lanterns in various different ways that you could put this together. You only have to use your imagination in this kind of thing. And you can even use lanterns in your garden settings. This is the sort of thing you might expect to see at a wedding or a party or something like that, and it does add quite a lot. Okay, moving on to the grindstone, which is one of my new favourite blocks that they've added in this update. It's so unique in the way that it looks, and it places differently depending on which way you're facing, so it gives a lot of variety. So I thought, why not use it in a water wheel? Instead of having to use the oak fence gate here, which doesn't quite look like it's gonna hold anything, the grindstone actually looks like it might hold a bit of water with a bit of imagination thrown in there. I think it looks rather nice and works quite well. Moving swiftly on, we can now make all sorts of different kinds of machines. You'll notice that there's actually some grindstones holding this up, and even that there's like a belt mechanism, because this, connected to each other, kind of looks like a rotary system of some kind. And then there's some stone cutters here. Put that all together on a table, and you've got yourself a wood planing thing, or, you know, cutter, a buzzsaw, whatever you want to call it. Really cool thing if you've got a wood shop or something like that that you want to make, or some kind of industrial build, and we'll come back to that later. Now, there's a few different designs that are possible by doing this. You've only got to configure these in whatever way you see fit. And there's another design over here that's a bit more compact. All of these work absolutely brilliantly. It's the fact that you could get this animated stone cutter. The only thing that is a rather annoying thing about this is that it doesn't rotate with you. It always goes the same way no matter what, which means if you're going to make one of these little cutting machines, it's always got to be facing this way. Next up, you might have expected this, but because you can link these together, they look an awful lot like wheels. In fact, these look like train carriages, and there's quite a few little vehicles that I do want to show you today. But you can see that we've got the train track here, but the stone cutters are facing each other, and it, it really does look unique. You could even use these to connect up the carriages, but we've opted for the hoppers in this case. Moving on. Some more simple designs that you might expect. Here we have a wheelbarrow, because obviously it does look like a wheel, and a cauldron, and then, you know, the old fence gate. This is actually an idea that's been around for a long time. I've shown this on one of my videos, but the fact that we can put the grindstone on it actually just completes the whole look. So that looks really cool. And I told you there was more vehicles. This is a very compact looking motorcycle that you can actually sit in if you put a minecart on the top. With the brewing stand there, it actually looks like a cool little complete vehicle. You can place these in different orientations like so. Well, maybe not that way. This way. And it can look like that. But I think it works well if it's facing outwards. Either way, a very neat and compact little machine that you could put in any kind of city. Moving on. I told you there was going to be more vehicles. Again, these look like excellent looking wheels, but connect them up in this configuration and you can make a pretty decent looking tank. Now there's a couple more of the new blocks in here, the scaffolding that works quite well in the back as a cage, and the, even the stone cutter, which makes it look like there's more machinery up here. This is a fantastic looking machine, but moving on, would this be complete without using a toilet design? Yes, I think the grindstone could be used as a bog roll. <laughs> toilet paper, some very square toilet paper, but this is Minecraft after all. <laughs> so even the smallest decorations where it's on its own, in context, can work. Moving swiftly on away from the toilet, so here is another compact design. Now this is using the new block, the lectern, which does actually rotate as you place it round. And we can make a pretty good looking arcade machine. Now this is only possible because we're able to place the item frames on the top and the back, and they all occupy this same block space. So this looks pretty cool. It's actually made of spruce trapdoors, but 
again, you could use any trapdoor, covering up the fact that there's books there with a sign, and we've got ourselves a pretty neat looking arcade machine that's exactly the height of the player in Minecraft, which is much more realistic. Moving on, we've got a Tori, which is a Japanese gate. Now, obviously the only real addition here is the fact that there's a bell there. Now, I don't think that there are bells on many of these. I didn't see any when I visited Japan, but I think it does make an excellent addition to this kind of design. And there's not actually a lot of places that you can use the bell, in my opinion, just because it's so small. We actually tried to make a bell tower, but because of the size of the bell, it always looked absolutely tiny compared to anything that we made. Anyway, moving on, we've got ourselves a, a new fence design, again using the lectern. Because of this weird slant, it does actually make it look pretty unique. Moving swiftly on again. Now this is one of my all time favorite designs from this video. This is a bowling alley and it uses the lectern again. Again, because of this slanting thing, it looks like the gutters of a bowling alley. And then add in a few scaffolding as some tables. You've got yourself a pretty good looking place. Lanterns make a brilliant alternative light source and the overall effect is really quite nice here. So feel free to make some bowling alleys now, and if you want, you can even place the lecterns right next to each other to create a gutter that looks like that, but it's got that annoying gap down the middle and doesn't look quite as convincing. Moving on to the next one, we've got a really cool, unique design. Now this looks exactly like what it's supposed to be, a dentist chair or even maybe an old-fashioned barber's chair as well. You've got the footstool and then you've got the angle using this lectern again and even this makes a really nice table so add in some um, shears which you definitely wouldn't want to use in dentistry <laughs> and you've got yourself a really cool looking dentist chair. All you got to do is place the trapdoor over on top of the lectern and then add some signs on the side and you've got yourself the design that you need. And then we've got some more designs using these lecterns as chairs because these are the first time that you can create a really rather convincing one block chair that matches a table because before we had to use oak stairs like so and they always connect up to the table and it just doesn't look quite right. So the fact that they freestand and there's a little gap there, it looks far more convincing. And we've even made the back of the bar out of some of the new blocks as well to show you how you might use those in this scenario. Moving on to the next one, we have lecterns underneath some carpet. Now this is pretty cool because the top of the lectern only pops through the top of the carpet, which gives you a rather nice little thing. You could even use this on top of someone's desk in an office because it looks like a little nameplate as well. There's so many uses for these new blocks and this allows you to create sort of a guided pathway where you can walk between them and overall it just gives you a pretty nice effect. Now the next one is another vehicle design as you might be able to see. This is a more modern train and requires more modern wheels. So we've got the stone cutter here actually integrated into part of the track but kind of hidden by these wooden planks here and underneath the top of this train it actually looks like it's rotating now. It is a bit odd, I wish that we could place them from downwards and they would like face downwards because that would look even more realistic. However, with a bit of imagination, this works extraordinarily well and you can connect up the carriages using the grindstone that I mentioned all the way back there in the old fashioned train carriage. So overall, this is a really, really cool design. And these two blocks in particular give us a lot of freedom when it comes to making vehicles. Of course, a limitation with this build is that the train will only ever be able to travel in this direction because the stone cutter just doesn't rotate. That's just an unfortunate side effect, I think. But it doesn't matter as long as you can build it into your worlds at all. Moving on, the stone cutter isn't just the blade. The bottom half actually does make a pretty good decoration tool for the walls. And again, the smithing table and blast furnace can be mixed together to make a pretty decent looking floor as well. I've mixed a bunch of these together to make some sort of prison style wall. Blast furnace at the bottom. We've got stone cutters to prevent people going over. I do wonder 
if at some point these would deal damage to the player. Because if these end up dealing damage, which would make so much sense, you could actually make a lot of traps using this, which I'm very excited about. And you've got the grindstones at the top to act as a deterrent. And overall, it gives you a nice effect, especially with this iron lamp on the top. The lanterns themselves look very industrial and it all works together rather well. Next up, I've got another compact design to show you, which I think looks absolutely brilliant. This is a grandfather clock. So we've actually got the Minecraft clock up there at the top, but it's the lectern, which looks like it's holding the bell. And all you have to imagine is it's swinging side to side and you've got yourself an old fashioned grandfather clock. And I think that works really well together. And it is compact, which is one of the main things. It actually feels in scale to a person, which is rather important when you're doing interior design. Moving on, we've got the smallest bell tower that we could come up with. I'm afraid we've rather failed on the bell tower front, so we'll just swiftly move on. <laughs> Next up is another lamppost design that really should have been over there, but here we are. The lantern is a bit strange in the fact that it will hang from some things, but not others. For example, if I hang the lantern, it will sit from the bottom or hang from the bottom, but it won't sit on top. I can't place it on top of the hopper, which makes making lampposts a bit of a pain. Either way, I'm hoping that more options will become available to us in regards to the bell and the lantern and where it can be placed. So this is a rather compact looking prison cell. Uh, this is the second prison related thing, so it's a bit odd, but it fits really well. The blast furnace has this little grate on the front, and if you nestle it right in the corner, it actually looks like a vent to a building, but because it's so gray, it works rather well in a prison setting, and of course, so does the lantern. It's rather gloomy looking and a bit ominous, so it all works rather well together. Now that's kind of it for the smaller designs, but the crew have actually put together some larger examples of how all of these blocks could be combined to create rather nice larger builds. So here we have a workshop where I think most of the new blocks have been used apart from the crafting table style ones, and it all works really rather well. They synergize, they all fit. And I think they're absolutely brilliant additions to Minecraft in general. There's scaffolding as support tables, there's the stone cutter, there's grindstones, even, <laughs> even the barrels are being used as pillars. It all works together rather well. Now there's another design over here, which is the final one for today's video. Now this is like a factory or a power plant of some kind, but you'll notice there's scaffolding on the top. There's some stone cutters here, blast furnaces looking like they're attached to some sort of powering mechanism, even some smokers which look like they're chimney or whatever. It all synergizes rather well together. And that's pretty much it for today's video. Now there was a lot of designs to get through today and it was a giant group effort between myself and the rest of the crew. So I want to say a big thank you to them particularly Luvi Dubai, who did a lot of the vehicle stuff, Pajazzle, Tenku, Avarine, Simozzi, and of course, Pelescent Moon as well. More minds are better than one, and I'm very proud of what we've put together here, but I also feel like we've barely scratched the surface with what's possible with all of these new blocks, and I'm really excited to do more, especially if they introduce a few more blocks later on, I will definitely do another one. So that's it from me everyone, thank you very much for watching, these new blocks are so so exciting and I hope to come up with some more design videos for you in the very near future. I'm just hoping that these textures don't change because I feel like I waited a long time to make this video as it is. Most people have already shown lots of content from the snapshot servers. So I think this update is due next year, early next year, so all of these things will be possible in the future very soon. Thank you very much for watching everyone and good bye!